I grew up in a small town nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains, where stories of strange creatures and unexplained happenings were as common as the fog that rolled in each evening. But I never put much stock in them, until that night on Black Mountain. It was late October, and the air was crisp with the promise of winter. My friend Jake and I decided to spend a weekend camping on Black Mountain, a remote area known for its dense forests and rugged terrain. We were experienced outdoorsmen, and the thought of spending a few nights under the stars was an exciting escape from our daily routines. We set up camp near an old logging road, far off the beaten path. As the sun set, we built a fire and settled in for the night, swapping stories and roasting marshmallows. The forest was alive with the sounds of nocturnal animals, and the occasional rustle in the underbrush kept us alert but not alarmed. Around midnight, the woods grew eerily silent. The usual chorus of crickets and owls ceased, replaced by an oppressive stillness and a thick, musky odor that filled the air. It smelled primal, unlike anything I'd ever encountered. I exchanged an uneasy glance with Jake, a knot of dread forming in my stomach. We decided to turn in for the night, retreating to our respective tents. I had just started to drift off when I heard it, a low, guttural growl, unlike anything I'd ever heard before. It was close, too close. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to hear more. The growl came again, followed by the sound of heavy footsteps moving through the underbrush. Jake, I whispered, my voice trembling. Did you hear that? Yeah, he replied, his voice tight with fear. Stay quiet. We both lay still, listening as the footsteps circled our campsite. The fire had died down to embers, casting a dim, flickering light. Suddenly, a large shadow crossed the faint glow. This time, it wasn't fleeting. A massive, hulking figure, covered in dark fur, paused just beyond the edge of the clearing. For a terrifying moment, a single eye glinted back at me, reflecting the dying embers. It was gone as quickly as it appeared, but the memory of that primal gaze sent chills down my spine. The creature paused, sniffing the air, seemingly focused on something specific near our campsite. We couldn't make out what it was, but the intensity in its movements sent shivers down our spines. Then, it let out a bone-chilling howl that echoed through the mountains. My mind raced. Was this the legendary Bigfoot that old-timers in town spoke of? The stories always seemed far-fetched, but here I was, face to face with something unexplainable. After what felt like an eternity, the creature moved on, its footsteps fading into the distance. We waited, frozen in our tents, until the first light of dawn crept through the trees. Only then did we dare to emerge, shaken but unharmed. In the daylight, we found large, humanoid footprints around our campsite, each one nearly twice the size of my own. The ground was disturbed, and there were claw marks on a nearby tree, higher than any bear could reach. Jake and I packed up quickly, eager to put distance between ourselves and whatever had visited us that night. We didn't speak much on the hike back, each lost in our own thoughts. When we finally reached town, we shared our story with a few trusted friends, but most dismissed it as a tall tale. Yet, the evidence was undeniable. I don't know what we encountered on Black Mountain, but it changed the way I viewed the world. The Appalachians are ancient, mysterious, and they hold secrets that may never be fully understood. And sometimes, those secrets step out of the shadows and into our lives, leaving us with more questions than answers.